Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I've got a fun one for you. I know you're going to like this one. Um, you may be wondering why you're looking at a stick of butter, although you probably aren't because you've probably seen the thumbnail of this video, um, and you know that we are talking about knives with the best action, knives with the best buttery action. I didn't want to break into my list and give one away too early in the video, so that's why you're looking at butter. Buttery action, awesome knives. Um, I want to thank the Knife Whisperer for this one. Uh, I got low on knives of what to review, of stuff to review. I've got more coming in, but I was kind of hitting a little uh, a little stagnant point where I didn't have a lot. So I threw something out there on Instagram, which if you're not following me on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram, Wayne Sharp World. Um, but Knife Whisperer chimed in and said, hey, how about you do a video of your knives with the best action? And I thought, damn, why didn't I think of that? So thank you, Knife Whisperer awesome suggestion if you guys haven't checked his channel out uh give it a look give it a look give him a follow um knife whisperer on youtube and uh to all the rest of you watching thank you thank you for tuning in today if you like what you see do me a favor and hit that subscribe button i have got all sorts of stuff coming um a lot of top 10 lists a lot of bests of um that are going to be coming here in the future um just uh, got them all in line. I don't want to give something out every day. I want to spread out my content to keep you guys entertained throughout the week and not just three days in a row. Um, but it's all coming. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. And now let's get a little more into the subject of what we are talking about today. Let me move this nasty, greasy, disgusting butter and bring in – well, I'm going to set the first knife here. This is the CJRB Rhea. Now I want to go over some things here first too because this isn't just – there, there's some I, I put some limitations and stipulations for uh, this list. So this is what's not being considered. Um, I don't, I'm not going to have any front flippers in this one. I've got a couple separate videos geared towards front flippers. Um, so I don't want to overwhelm you guys with front flippers in like three to four videos. So I'm going to not include front flippers today. Um, fidget factor is also not included not included because fidget factor is different from action and i get that good action can lead to a fidget factor that's actually a fact but we're not talking about fidget factor today we're just talking about smooth operation i also have a separate video coming on fidget factor later on so stay tuned for that also have no automatics of any kind these are strictly manual knives um, and that was just a decision I made. Um, for one, legality standpoints, a lot of you guys that are living in New York, California, I think Chicago, certain other cities around the world or states, the country and world as well, um, you can't use automatics. So I wanted to try and at least keep it to knives that you could potentially use. Some of the blade lengths might be too long, but I'm just, I'm trying here. So, um, and it's really easy to have a knife with – an automatic knife with good action. I know that a lot of engineering and stuff goes into it. But all that aside, um, manual operation is going to stay uh, the theme for these knives. Here's what is being considered. A well-tuned detent, smoothness and speed on deployment, and drop shuttiness. Those three. And one other little thing that I'm going to give kind of like a bonus for are good sounds. Good sounds when you're opening the knife, the good clicks, the good uh, – you, you guys know what I'm talking about. If, if you know, you know. I'll point that out as we go. And I know sound is not action, but sound is also not fidget factor. So I kind of – it fell somewhere in the middle, and I thought, you know what? Everyone enjoys a nice-sounding knife. So I'm going to give some bonus points for that. Um, and now let's start. This is the CJRB Rhea. You guys have seen this one a lot, and it is just – it's its really butter. For a small knife, this is the best action for a small knife that I think I've ever handled, and I, I honestly mean that. Um, it flies out. It sounds nice. A little average sounding, but when it closes – it is so silent. It's it's not completely silent, but it's very quiet. You usually hear the detent click harder. I mean, I can do this. And you barely hear anything. It's kind of like a muffled sound. It's it. I like it. It's nice. It it makes for a better uh, casual gentleman's carry. And that's exactly what this is. With the micarta, I think it gives it more of a, a casual look. But it's also a great gentleman's carry with a nice, uh, shorter, but very versatile blade. And it's just awesome. It, it's buttery, it drops shut, 
this is actually a very good definition of butter because it flies out easily, not too hard, but not slowed, like the perfect speed, and it shuts and just, and you're good, just like that. Um, there's really nothing I would really change about this knife. I like, I think it's unique with the uh, one thumb stud. That makes it harder for lefties. I get that. I'm sorry about that. But uh, if you're a righty, you would love this knife. It's just awesome. Action's awesome. That is the CJRB Rhea. And next up, we have one Kaiser Sheepdog, the mini Sheepdog, specifically because watch. It flies out. It has a nice, sharp, crisp click, and it actually feels really good in hand. You know, I did not think this would feel good in my hand. I The, the short handles and the way my finger comes up to the choil here, I thought there would be a lot of dead space down here. But it's not as bad as I thought. And after I got this guy and played with it for a while, it is super crisp, flies out. Um, I got to give the credit to Slicey Dicey on this one. I probably would have never bought this knife, and he did a review on it one time talking about just how awesome the action was. And I thought, yeah, what, what, whatever. And then I got bored one day, and I couldn't think of anything to buy. I really wanted to buy a knife. Didn't want to spend a lot. Um, this guy is coming in at, I believe, $69, and it uh, it fit the bill. Look at that thing drop shut. Flies right out. And it drop. Whoop. Sometimes you, there's no detent ramp on this, so sometimes the detent ball will catch the liner lock. But if you get past that liner lock, it just drops shut. So excellent drop shuttiness. Nice click, and it flies out. It's it, it's a nice balance of uh, weight here on this blade. You got a bigger blade, smaller handles. I think the pivot is just in the perfect spot, and they also did a very good job on the placement of the flipper tab and the actual point that you push on to flip it out, and it works amazingly. So that is the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. If you've ever been on the fence on this one, guys, give it a shot because it really is. It's a it's an attractive, unique piece for a little knife. Very fun look, very useful blade, and amazing action. Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. Now, I have been accused of being a Kaiser fan on this channel, and you know what? I, I kind of am a Kaiser fan. I've really started to like them lately, um, but this is the last Kaiser in this video, and this is the Kaiser Gemini, and I promise there's no more Kaisers, so there's only two. That's pretty good, um, but <clears throat> excuse me. This is the Kaiser Gemini, and as you can see, it flew out just as well as the Mini Sheepdog, and what's even more impressive about this knife is Thin Blade... And it just falls shut. And it's the way it falls shut, the drop shuttiness of this knife is just it's it's like I don't it's it's like clouds almost. It just goes right down. You don't really feel anything. It's just so smooth, so light. This knife overall is very light. I don't have the – it's like 2.5, 2.6 ounces. I shouldn't say that because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm almost positive that's what it is. Um, but these micarta scales, these thin micarta scales and milled out liners and just a thin blade make for a very compact carry. And the action is just – I don't know what Kaiser's doing this year with for the action on their knives, but they are absolutely on point. Detents are amazing. Blades fly out when you have a full flat grind that is this thin. I want to say this was 0 .10, 0 0.09, very thin or thin enough, thinner than the average blade. We'll put it that way, and it just flies right out. Amazing action on a great knife for just seventy five bucks with um, some decent micarta. It's just a very nice Ray Laconico design. If you like Ray Laconico, this is one you guys have to get. Um, it's probably one of the most, if not the most affordable Ray Laconico design you can grab. And it's, man, I, I, I find myself hard pressed to say it's not one of the best. So that's the Kaiser Gemini from Kaiser designed by Ray Laconico. And it is a beauty. And next up, you've seen this one once, but I've never done a review on this. This one is the Civivi Insight. And let me just show you real quick why it's on this list. Look at that. Flies right out. But this, 
This is tied with another knife that you'll see here later for the best drop shitty action. It's insane. It, it, this is probably better. This is probably better. And when I show you guys that other knife, you're going to be like, what? But I swear, this knife just flies out. I also just love the blade shape on this. Kind of a leaf, leafish design, I guess. Or leaf blade shape. It's kind of reminds me of a, a, a combination of like, in all honesty, like a Sebenza and a Manix 2 is what the blade shape of this kind of reminds me of. And that might be silly, but it's it's what I see. So I saw it, now I can't unsee it. But it just falls shut. It flies out. It is so buttery, so glassy. And when you push that liner lock in, just tilt it up, and it shuts. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I could do this. I know I'm not talking fidget factor, but this is just a very, very nice knife that uh, is a perfect example of a knife that translates into a good fidget factor, but because, because it's so smooth, so smooth in and out. That's the Kai, the, bleh, the Civivi Insight. Um, you can get this guy everywhere, but you, it's a little harder to find this model. This model was $100. Um, you can get the more standard models for, I believe, 70 ish something like that. Um, but look at that. I mean, after you see this, yeah, yeah. Get yourself one of these, Civivi Insight. Next up, we have the Wii Banter. And this is surprising because this, I, I didn't know what to expect from this knife. When I, when I first saw the pictures of it, I wasn't even going to buy it because I didn't really like the way it looked. And then I thought, no, I, I do kind of like the way it looked. The more I saw it, it just kind of rubbed off on me. I don't really like a black blade, but I like the blue highlight on this. It's actually a very um, very friendly looking knife. It's not aggressive like some of the other ones you've seen or will see on, on this video. Um, it's just really nice. And I have yet to open this one and clean it. And I've had it for a while. I've carried it a while. I probably should. Uh, at least loop it up a little, but even without the extra maintenance, it just, it, it's on bearings. It's a small blade on bearings made by Wii, so you know it's going to have good action. The thumb studs are placed perfectly to where you, no wrist flies right out. I mean, absolutely no wrist for anything. It just flies right out, and it is so smooth. Um, just a very nice little compact package. There's really nothing that makes this knife the best EDC knife ever, but there's a lot of things that make it great. And the action is definitely one of them. Very easy to operate. And with action so smooth with a blade flying out, it's a very, like I said before, unintimidating blade. So it's just, it's a great knife to, to carry around the office or anywhere that you don't want to, you know, whip out a, I, I can't say it because I, it's on the list. So it's coming up. But no, great action. Great solid action for $108. I've said before, it could probably be a little less, but you also feel like you, you're getting your money's worth when you buy it. So no huge issues there with the price, I guess. Wish it was under 100 bucks. If it's 108 why can't it be 100 right? Just me. But it's a great knife. Um, absolutely, it fits in the pocket nice. But, like I said, we're talking about the action, and the action is buttery. If you like the middle finger flick, you will like this knife because it's very easy to do. Compact package, like I said before. Both thumb studs placed in the perfect spot. Pinch it with your hands. There it is. That is the Wii Banter, and it is very deserving to be on this list with some very smooth, buttery Ben action. Next up, we have the Finch. Model 1929, and that was pretty much all you need to hear and see. That nice, crisp click, that very unique blade flying out. Like I said before, I've said this in other videos, the action of this really does remind me of the action of the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. This flies out just a little better because it's a bigger, heavier blade. That's, that's just going to happen. But that flies out with the click. And that flies out with a click. And the only difference, like I said, is the size of the blade and the force carrying. This creates a little uh, louder click as to where this is a little lighter click. But the feel is the same. The looks are different. And you go from one a uh, little more aggressively crazy looking knife to just a nice timeless design um, that's a little modified to be a little more modern. Um, 
just a great knife. Very useful blade. Excellent gentleman's carry. All around, just a very solid little knife. This is a nice uh, Sunday brunch knife. Does that sound? Sunday brunch. Everyone enjoys a good brunch with mimosas and alcoholic beverages of whatnot and some good food. Carry, pull this out, you know, cut the cheese. <laughs> just a nice knife. Nice knife, but a very, very uh, great action. Great action. The, the action on this knife was good. But after I took it out and ran some loop through it and cleaned it, it's excellent. Absolutely excellent. And I could not be more happy with this knife. Like the design, like everything about it. That's the Finch Model 1929. And it does. It shakes shut, too, for a smaller blade. Smaller blades usually don't shake shut very easily. But this one does. Very well, too. Nice little click at the end. That's the Finch Model 1929. And now, another one that doesn't really get enough credit, the ZT0055. And the only reason this is not one of my favorite knives of all time is because this tab can tend to wear on your finger. Um, it's steel or aluminum. It, it, it's a very uh, hard material with nice jimping because it needs that jimping to use it to deploy. Um, so no issue there. But when you do deploy it, it rockets out. And even better, it drops shut. Um, it is a little thicker blade, so there's some weight there. But still, oh, that, that was my tripod. My bad. Let's do that one more time. There we go. It just flies right out. Um, I held off on this model for a long time, and the only reason I think I got it to begin with is it went on sale for like 155 bucks, which was dirt cheap. I think this was like, uh, I want to say it was like 229 I think 229 when it was brand new. And for 155 I thought, you, you can't pass this up. You got to you gotta go for it. And I did, and I'm really glad I did. It stuck around in the collection. I've thought about selling it a couple times, but... I just I, I love the unique opening opening method with the flipper tab. I believe this is called SLT. I can't remember what SLT stands for. Um, something something tab. I can tell you that uh, spring loaded tab. Spring loaded tab. I believe yes. Spring loaded tab is what this stands for, and it just flies out. It almost feels automatic, but it's definitely not. There is no assist in this knife whatsoever. Um, all that force is generated from the spring-loaded tab. And it's just the tab that's spring-loaded. As you can see, it, it falls back in. So, and man, it just flies out. Flies out, feels good. Your finger starts to feel it, though, as you can see. It's, one, it's the only downfall to this knife, but it's still a great knife. And it just very lightly shakes shut. Just an awesome knife. That is the zero ZT0055. Next up, we have the notorious Deadpool PM2 Tonto. And it, it would be really easy to put a PM2 on this. And a PM2 could probably fall on this too because PM2s have fantastic action. But I've said it before, I'm going to say it again on this video, the weight and thickness and beef of this blade makes, in my opinion... I enjoy deploying this blade probably more than the standard PM2, and it just falls shut. I mean, it doesn't get any more drop shutty than this. It, it's amazing. And the way you really do, if you watch my, if you kind of watch like right here on the scale when I deploy it, you see like the inertia and the weight of the blade coming out, it kind of shakes the handle a little. And I like that. It, I never feel like I've never even for a second come close to dropping this, deploying it. Super stable in hand. But it just feels like you are whipping out some force. And you are because that is one sick, gnarly Tonto blade. Very well done by Spyderco. Um, yeah, great action. Great, great action. If you like middle finger flipping a knife, Spidey flicking a knife... You got to get one of these. They're coming back to Blade HQ. They're sold out right now, but they will be back. It's a guarantee. Um, so just keep your eyes open. And if you like Spyderco, if you like Tontos, if you like Spidey Flicking, you absolutely have to grab one of these. 
amazing knife. Spyderco PM2 Tonto. Next up, the probably the closest thing to an automatic we have on here, only because it is from Protec, and it's not automatic whatsoever. Um, might look automatic, but it's not. It's the Protec Malibu, and this thing is... This is just a prime example of Dave Wattenberg at Protec. When he, that guy does something, especially something new, you can guarantee yourself it is going to be done right, and that's exactly what happened here. I mean... It's just the detent on this knife for for a company that has always been about automatics, out the side automatics for the most part. This is absolutely, I'm not going to say perfect, but I don't know how it could be much better. Um, <clears throat> just a perfect blade length, blade to handle ratio is nailed, feels great in hand, ergos are amazing. But the action, again, is the bread and butter of this. It's a button lock. As you can see right there, that extra piece of steel comes out and locks the blade in place perfectly. Zero blade play. Centering is perfect. I would, I've would. i never had a ProTech with bad centering. Just me. Maybe the other people have. I've never had a ProTech with bad centering. I've never really had a problem with any ProTech, to be honest. Um, it's easily one of my favorite brands and it's because they make some of the best knives you can get and quality is always through the roof. But again, you just push down on this. It, it, it's almost weird the way it feels because the bearings and the detent in this, it's like the blade floats out. Like you don't feel the bearings moving or anything. You just feel the blade swing out and it's absolutely amazing. This is addictive. When I, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, when I do a video on Fidget Factor, I mean, if I don't have this knife in there, it's going to be in there. But if for some reason this knife isn't in a Fidget Factor video, you shouldn't be reviewing knives because the Fidget Factor is through the roof. But that's not what puts it on this list. It, it's just the smoothness. You feel absolutely nothing when you deploy this blade. All you hear is that nice little click, but when it's actually swinging out, it's just, it's it's like it was dipped in lubricant, like everything. It's ridiculous. Easily one of the smoothest knives I have. Drop shutty to no end. It's a guillotine, but it's nice because you never have to put your fingers in the way of the blade because it's a button lock. It's amazing. And I really hope Protec makes a lot more of these in different styles. I wish they would make a front flipper that you could flip out and then just deploy in with the button. Dave, if, you, if you're watching this, or anyone from Protec, if you're watching this, button lock front flipper, please make it happen. Make it happen and take my money because it would be absolutely amazing. And I'm sure it would be immediately one of my favorite knives because... I already know it's ProTech. It's going to be great, but I can just imagine a button lock front flipper would be, oh, God, it'd be amazing. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for that. This is the ProTech Malibu, and it has some of the best action you can find. So pick one up when you can. These are popular. They go quick. Next up. Now, this is the other knife that I was going to compare to the Safivi Insight, and that is the ZT0562CF. This is the collaboration with Rick Hinderer and ZT of the XM18 Slicer. And yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that, it's like a glassy, look at that. See that? I think the inside is a little better, just, just by, uh, uh the, the smallest margins, but still, that, that, that snap, that snapping click you get at the end when it locks in, just amazing. And you can push it. You can flip it. So this is the push. Flies right out. And then here's the actual flip. They both work just as fine. I always prefer the push. I'm becoming to, I'm becoming more and more of a pusher on my flipper tabs than an actual flipper because I feel like they just come out a little better when there's not jimping on the flipper tab. It makes it a little harder to do. But doesn't matter because the detent is nailed on this. It makes it pretty easy to do. I very rarely do what I just did there when I go to deploy it. Um, it comes out 
basically 99.99999% of the time you're going to have a successful deployment on this knife and the action is just fantastic flies out no blade play i mean have you ever had blade play with a zt i mean come on but it just you get it past that detent ball and right shot and this was right out of the box too i have this is another knife i've carried it actually a decent amount of times and i've never had to open it and it's actually just broken in more and more just a fantastic knife one of the best zts of all time easily in the top five um where in the top five i don't know if you if you look back on my channel i have a zt video um where it's not number one so go check out to see what's number one but the action on this is just phenomenal it's just absolutely phenomenal um in and out that is the zt 0562 cf and they also make a tie version in this which is just as good the tie version the i just happen to have carbon fiber because i plan on getting a custom scale at some point and this was a little cheaper so that's really the only reason um tie or cf are both amazing Got three more for you, and the next one is none other than the SOCOM Elite from Microtech. Um, this is a perfect combination of action and sound, because when this thing, first of all, it shakes shut very easily, um, but when you open this up, it almost feels like you're pulling a sword out of a sheath. I mean, it just has a, an echoey, deeper acoustic sound. And very nice detent, but just listen to that. It's just, it's awesome. And nothing says badass knife more than a Microtech SOCOM Elite, in my opinion. Um, the Ultratex, and of course, everything Microtech makes has that extra little bit of flair and uh, just kind of just that badass look. But but man, I don't know. I'm a sucker for a SOCOM Elite. I had an automatic, and I'm so glad I was able to trade that and throw a little cash a guy's way. I need to stop doing that. This video is too long. I'm not going to stop it here. We're 27 minutes in. But um, I was I was really lucky to get one of these. These are really hard to find, especially in this configuration. Just the regular stone wash, plain edge. Um, very very nice knife, and it's just. It, it's Microtech. So if you guys know Microtech, you know the action is going to be on point. You know the materials and quality and construction and all that is going to be on point. But this one is just a step ahead of the game when it comes to just that amazing action and some of the best sounds you can get out of a knife. They're just unique. They're unique and they're amazing. And that's the Microtech SOCOM Elite. Two more. We'll try and speed this up just a little. This one here is the Quiet Carry Waypoint, and right here, that's the only reason it's on this channel or on this episode because it's it's not drop shutty at all. I mean, you, I mean, maybe a fight. Yeah, there you go. But this is not drop shutty. But the deployment out is uh, it's in my top three. If I had to pick three knives that I've ever handled that that whip out that are not assisted in any way um best action coming out this is easily in it and it and it could be i don't know if it'd be number one it very well could be though this blade absolutely rockets out and if i had to guess i think it has to do with let me wipe this blade off here clean yourself off um i think that has to do with such tight tolerances um, and it's the fact that it's on washers. So you have to give it a good push. You, you, you can kind of fudge this, you know, you can do that, but I did that on purpose. Um, if you, you're not really supposed to push out, I do more of like an up, like an up at like this direction right here, push the flipper or the thumb stud up at this direction. And every time it's going to fly out with authority and it's going to sound great. It's going to feel great. It's going to have perfect lockup and you're good to go. But the, the tolerances on this knife are just – they're really kind of uh, in the realm of, of I, I would say, like a Sabenza or, or a Umumzan as far as just the closeness from the scale to the blade. Um, very tight tolerances, and you feel it too. You feel those tight tolerances. Super premium materials. You cannot rust this knife. It is absolutely rust-proof, which is an absolute amazing thing for me. I, it's 
probably my favorite thing about the knife, but there's so much to love about it. The action, though, is also very high on that list, and it is why it is on this list. And this is not a cheap knife. This knife is $295, but in my opinion, it, for a true EDC, I, I, you know, I wouldn't want to buy three or four of them, but to buy one, yes. Yes. All day, yes. Amazing steel, amazing materials. Incredible, incredible action. The Quiet Carry Waypoint. And last but not least, this one might surprise some people. This is the Hinderer XM18. But listen and watch. Click, fly, locked in. It, this is just a great knife, guys. And it, it's an iconic knife. An XM18, if you had to make a Mount Rushmore of knives, this would have to be on it. it, it I, I don't see how it couldn't. Um, just a beefy blade, a working knife. Um, how many people actually abuse their hinderers? That's probably a better question because I don't think a lot of us do, in all honesty. Which is fine. Hey, you know what? Different folks, different strokes. No problem with that whatsoever. But I think everyone would agree the action is fantastic. Um, I had a problem one time with the XM18 that had kind of a bum detent. Um, got that fixed. This is actually that knife I had the issue with. And I couldn't be happier with it now, especially with this amazing micarta scale that I got. It, it is a Rick Hinderer scale. Um, but it just it makes such a satisfying, crisp click. Um, and it flies out for, you know, you feel the beak. You can also flip it, and it comes out just fine. I prefer the push on this because I think the push brings it out a little harder. But it's just an awesome knife. Awesome knife, but again, the action both ways, in and out. Very, very smooth. I could probably loosen this up just a hair, too, to where it'd be more drop shutty. But I kind of like it a, just a tad stiffer like this. I, I really like that in my hinders. I don't know why. It's just a personal preference. But I do like it like this to where I have to shake it a little more to get it in. But that's them, guys. That's all of them. What do you think? What did I miss? What knife do you have? What knife do you have has the best action in your collection? Uh, let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It ran a little long, but for good reasons. That's it. Until the next one, I'm out.